Hello, beautiful lights. This is Dr. Janine. I'm glad to have you with me today. We're going to be talking about what it is and what it's like to be an empath and what the difference is between that and simply having empathy for other people, which is wonderful too. I'm going to be starting a new segment on my YouTube channel about being an empath, and that will also be posted onto my blog at lifelessonsbyjanineMarie.com. So you can also find it there, or it usually gets posted to Facebook, and if it's small enough, it will go on Instagram as well. So let's get started. Why did I choose this subject? Well, <laughs> one of the biggest reasons is I am an empath. And so I can address what it's like to be an empath and maybe fill in some of the blanks for some of you who are around somebody who is an empath and you don't know how to interact with that person or how to understand them. So this might give you a little bit more understanding let me first start off by identifying the difference between being an empath and having a lot of empathy for someone or just simply having empathy. Empathy is a wonderful thing. It means that maybe someone has experienced something and they have explained that to you or maybe you know that has been opened up to you and because you've experienced close to that or maybe that's very same thing you identify it or identify with it and so your heart goes out to them you feel a sense of identifying with them and so you have empathy for them you understand it goes beyond compassion if they're going through sadness you feel their sadness because you've been through that journey you know and the beauty about having empathy for other people in any particular situation is if you've been along that life path, if you've been through that journey, you have some of the answers for that person. And it's a beautiful connection. How awesome is that? Now it's very different to be an empath than to just simply have empathy. And I don't want to diminish it by saying just. I'm just saying that um, living the life as an empath is a whole different ball game. So let me explain to you what it was like and has been like for me. And I know that my situation is very, very much like others who are empaths because I've interacted with them and known in a group session, or, you know, or, or group segments and, you know, just reading about it, that a lot of the things that we experience are very much the same. So for me, as I was growing up, not knowing that we are born that way. When an empath is an empath, you don't just become one because it's enlightened to you or comes to your knowledge. You've been that way all of your life. And so when I was you know, brought into this world, I was an empath and still am. And um, I just didn't have the knowledge that that's what I was. I knew that there was something about me that was a little bit different than the other people that were around me. And that, you know, first initially was my family. And it kind of feels like you're watching the world unfold around you. And you're watching these segments of things going on in life and you feel very deeply about them, but you don't know how to really express yourself about why you feel deeply and you, and you don't want to because you feel like, you know, you know these things or you know something about a certain situation, but you're not really old enough. And that's how I felt. I wasn't really old enough to come out and address those situations with, you know, say my parents or, you know, other sibling or, you know, other family members. I can just watch it and know that I'm understanding it differently than they are but not really being able to put my finger on as to why or what I should do about it. And so as I grew up, you know, going into the school system and, you know, going to school with other people and finding friends and, you know, being around family members that were basically my same age, I felt a little shy and a little withdrawn in a lot of ways. And then in others, maybe not as much, but it's like, other people around me um, knew that 
I was feeling or sensing things that were different or there was something different about me, but because they couldn't really put um, maybe a definition as to what that was, they just thought maybe something was wrong with me. And so because I did not know how to put a definition upon what I was going through and feeling and experiencing, I didn't know what I was, I also took that upon myself and thought something was wrong with me because I knew I was different than everyone else around me. And so, you know, this is very hard. It's very hard growing up because we're going through those growing pains anyway. And to go through growing pains anyway, and to also have these other feelings that are going on inside of us is real difficult to handle. It's like a very delicate balancing act. It's um, hardest for me because I know that as an empath, I feel things. I have feelings in my body, my emotions, and I know things that are, that, you know, that come to my mind. I sense things energetically and spiritually. I know now that that's a great thing because I can identify it, I know how to channel it, I know how to use it, and I know how to explain it. That's the big thing, I know how to explain it. Sounds weird to some people, that's fine. Let it be weird. But I know, and a lot of people out there know that it isn't weird, it's a gift. It actually is a gift to this world. So if some of the things I begin to talk about you identify with, Maybe you identify with all of them. Please know it's not because you're the oddball out. It's because you're the amazing one too that came here uh, dressed in this beautiful body with all of these beautiful sensations that identify with other people in a way where you can say, hey, I understand and I can maybe identify with this or I can help you with this. And, um, you know, I think some of the biggest key regarding being an empath is trying to figure out and sort out just exactly what we're feeling and why and sorting out if it's our feeling, if it's our difficulty, or if it's someone else around us. That was one of my biggest challenges because even, um, when I came to the knowledge or came into the knowledge that yes, this is what I am, this is who I am. I know I pick up on you know energy vibrations. I pick up on people's energy field around them. Yes, I identify with their heart feelings, their emotions. I can feel what's going on in their body. The hardest thing to do was trying to identify if it was what I was going through personally or if it was what their issue was. And I think a part of that comes, you know, becomes clear. We come into clarity about it when we learn to meditate and still everything inside of us and begin to really think and feel on the inside and ask the question, is this my issue or is this something that's going on with someone around us? Sometimes it just blurts out as intuitive knowledge. This is what's going on with you. And someone might say, no, it isn't. And I know it's not my issue, you know, because we get good at it. And they say, no, I don't feel that way. Or I don't think that way, or I didn't do that. Or, you know, that wasn't me, or I'm not, you know, that's not my body, whatever. That's called their denial. <laughs> it's called their denial. And, you know, I've been down that river of denial. <laughs> Sorry, that's corny, but, um, it's almost like you can fool yourself, but you can't always fool an empath that's around you. Sometimes, maybe, but not always, you know? And we get pretty good at it. We get pretty good at discerning who we are. And we also get pretty good at discerning what people feel and act around us and, you know, what they experience around us. And they kind of look at us sometimes. And like I said, denial comes through and they don't want to maybe admit that we know something about them 
because it might be personal and they're not ready to really talk about that issue and that's fine that has to be totally fine i know that for me a lot of physical feelings happen if someone for instance has a toothache i'll think that i have a toothache or a problem because my jaw will start to hurt and i also have an issue with you know the tmj area i have arthritis in that area so it makes it even harder for me to fine-tune are you having a toothache do you have a jaw ache do you have a headache or is this my ache and usually it will clear as soon as i clear it through my throat so through if you know about the chakra system the throat chakra it comes out my mouth i know that you have a toothache i know you need to go to the dentist why how do you know well because it hurts in my jaw and once it comes out usually the hurt goes away it's because the purpose for it being there has already been explained and you know sometimes it takes a little while sometimes it takes a lot of energy but the harder things are the emotional things the things that hit the heart the things of the heart are always the more difficult things as human beings on this planet we are heart feeling people you can't even tell me when you look at maybe the coldest person in the world that they don't have some emotional heart feeling you know we're sometimes very good at shutting things down but all of us have heart feelings and sometimes there can be someone who is around me that is emotionally going through something they can you know some of the obvious things is they can be very angry and they don't express express that anger and i'll feel the anger and it's like it's in the air you know the, the energy field has already told me it has merged with my energy field and i have sucked that in and i have now determined that they're angry or they're sad or they're going through an emotional upheaval they might deny it they might say they don't want to talk about it that's fine but once it comes out of my mouth and it clears i know that then it's not my issue if it's my issue it's going to stay when it's my issue it becomes very difficult to deal with as well um, i think it's sometimes easier obviously if it's someone else's and i need to speak about it and clear it from myself so that they you know can deal with it but when it's my own issue um, it's a little bit harder because it comes through looking like it's very sensitive like it's very extremely sensitive very maybe overly emotional maybe it shut down just a little bit sometimes i have to kind of shut myself down because it's overwhelming to feel some of the things i feel because i could be experiencing those emotional feelings along with other people's as well and so i'm dealing with not only my own but with theirs <laughs> so if it sounds overwhelming on this video believe me it is <laughs> it is but i've heard it all you're too sensitive you're too emotional you take things too hard you're being too negative you're too this you're too that and finally i was told by somebody who also is an empath saw what i was going through at some point and told me you're never to anything you're exactly who you're supposed to be you're not too sensitive when you're being sensitive it's a good thing you're sensing things and we're supposed to sense things it's just that you sense things more than maybe other people do so they think you're over the top and you're not you are sensitive in a way where you can pick up on other people's sensitivity or what they're going through so you can identify with it maybe bring it out your mouth talk about it and help them to resolve it so there's never a to anything we might feel something in our body maybe it's a stomach ache and someone is around us and they have appendicitis so we're doubled over and we're like oh my gosh why does my, why does my stomach hurt or why does my head hurt sometimes i have to say that oh my goodness i have such a bad headache why does my head hurt and if someone 
just come, who is around me comes out and says, I have a real bad headache too. And I have no idea why. Now, if mine instantly, instantly leaves, I know that it's because that was my empathy, my empath part of me going out and saying, okay, you have a real bad headache. <laughs> you know, you need to do something about that. Take a Tylenol, um, do some meditation, do some energy healing, whatever it is, however you um, work that out. Maybe you have an eye problem and you need an eye exam. And that's why you have the headache and maybe that's why you're having a lot of head headaches. So this is what it's like. I have to maneuver and ask questions. And sometimes I shut down a little bit and I have to really go deep inside of myself and be very quiet. And that comes off as very either depressed or sad. And sometimes it can be, or it'll come off as being just too shy. And it's, you know, basically not shy. It's kind of like, I just am not ready to expose whatever it is I'm feeling. I need to determine what that is that's going on. Is it yours? Is it mine? Is it the person down the street? Is it humanity? I'm telling you, when humanity goes through something, when society goes through something, I will cry probably harder than I've ever cried. I will go through an emotional upheaval that a volcano can't even come close to. It's like you can feel it. I can feel it. I don't want to just say you because you might not feel it the way I do, but I can feel it like Mount St. Helens is about ready to erupt. There's something going on in society that is just very difficult for me to bear. There might be a hatred or something, a hate crime that's going on or, or maybe a riot or you know whatever it is that's going on in the country or the world at this time. I'll feel it and I'll take it very, very hard. And it's because I need to clear it. I need to give love to it. I need to, you know, send love out to those situations. It's a trigger to say there's something that needs to be done. And that's the main thing that I want to put out to you. If you experience your life as an empath and you're trying to get your way through it, please understand that if you are going through these things, whether they're mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, you're going through them and experiencing them because there's something that needs to be done. And if it's outside of you, it's throwing love towards it. It's sending out love. It's giving out love. You might not be able to address love in person or even not feel like giving love to someone at that moment in person. But um, it's something that can be done from the inside. It's an inside job sending it out because we can send through our thoughts, through our mouth, you know, through our prayers, our meditations, through our energy field. We can send it a lot of different ways. So we don't always have to get into the altercation of what's going on around us. We don't have to be involved or try to say, stop it or don't do that. We might want to try to, we may even try it. But if nothing happens when we do try it, know that this is a cue to go inside of you and begin to bubble up and manifest some of that love inside of your heart space so that you can send it out. And when you do that, so that you don't drain yourself, bring it back to yourself as well and cultivate that love and send it through your body. Relieve that tension or conflict or maybe physical issue that's going on. Relieve it through your body and let it go. It's a process and it's one that you need to fine tune and you need to get used to because when you're not and you just go into denial, you suffer through it a lot. It's something that um, if you backpedal on it and you don't know what to do with it, you end up just taking it in and you suffer with it and nobody really needs to do that. It's, we weren't meant to come to this life to just suffer. We learn through our suffering, but that's not why we're here. We're here to love. So if you're an empath, if 
you're an empath like I am, we're here to love. We're gifted to be sensitive, to identify things, to identify a solution, and to also love, to send love into that solution. So, you know, we're going on 20 minutes here. I know that this is a lot to digest. For me, right now, where I'm at in this, you know, journey, I pretty much saw and read enough things about it to know that, yeah, it's like identifying things as, as a medical doctor would. This is what I go through. This is who I am. To say that is very freeing. If this is what you go through and this is who you are, maybe it's time for you to be freed up as well and to just come out and say, I know what you're, st what you're talking about. I feel the same things. People are always telling me I'm too sensitive. People are always telling me not to be so emotional. People are always telling me, oh my goodness, you're a hypochondriac. Why are you feeling a shoulder pain when somebody else is feeling it? What's going on with you? Now you have it? No. <laughs> Try identifying it, sending love to it and let it clear. Identify it, send love to yourself and let it clear because it will. If it's something that you are empathetically feeling for a purpose, it will absolutely clear your body. If it doesn't, then it might be time to go to the medical doctor and get checked out. And those are issues that I deal with as well. And we'll get to those in one of the next videos. But today, I just wanted to do kind of like a kickoff. I know this is a lot of information in, in just a little over 20 minutes. But um, I didn't really want to go beyond this. I just want to say that, yes, a lot of us are born this way. Many more of us than we realize. A lot of times in families. I know that my mother was an empath. I know she felt things very strongly. I know that she may not have known it, but she was very sensitive about a lot of different things. And I can see that now. I may not have been able to see it before, but you know, we act and react in a, in a very different way. And people look at us like maybe we're um, over the top. And we might be, we might be. Sometimes we need to center. We need to center and we need to um, have a constant ritual and habit of meditation. And we need to gravitate toward each other because when we do that and we link arms, even if it's energetically, then we have more strength. There's one more thing I want to say before I go because I don't want to forget. Being an empath is not a weakness. Okay? Being an empath is a strength. It's a gift. A person who has to live with a lot of empathy, a person who picks up on a lot of stuff, just going through, say, Home Depot or Lowe's. I mean, go into a place where there's a lot of metal, where the energy just bounces off all over the place. You have to be strong, very, very strong. And there have been many instances, instances in my lifetime where I can look back and say, I've had to be very strong. I didn't think I was because I am very, um, I guess uh, I'm a very serene person most of the time. Most of the time. I second guess myself a lot. <laughs> it's because it's part of my learning. You know, it's part of my time where I'm learning how to navigate the waters just a little bit better. There's always a fine tuning that needs to be done. And um, I don't fault myself anymore. I used to, and we'll get to that too. But I just wanted to make sure I put out there, being an empath is not a weakness. It is a huge strength. People who are empaths are very strong. They have to be in order to carry what we carry. We need a lot of prayer. We need a lot of love. We need a lot of affection. And so hopefully the people that are around us know and understand 
We need that love and support and affection. If not that, through each other and with each other, right? Amen. So with all of that said, I'm just going to stop right here and I'm going to say God bless you. I'm loving you from here and I look forward to my very next video and maybe hearing from you very soon. Bye-bye.